is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Bristol Flyers podcast, proudly sponsored by Web Gains. I'm Joel Osborne. He is Sam Hardy. Sam, how are you doing, sir? Doing very well, Jolie. Had a lovely little lovely day in the sunshine. You got a nice little coffee there, mate, as well. Yeah, well, my day's doing a little bit better, thanks to a lovely coffee from Borough Bristol, courtesy of a pair of uh, Legend Robertin missed free throws on Saturday night. Uh, of course, uh, if you were at the game, uh, you would have noticed that because Legend Robertin missed two free throws, everyone in the house got free coffee. It was actually so funny. Everyone started, like, chanting their own chant of, we want coffee, we <laughs> want coffee. And every time, I feel like, near enough every time Manchester went to the line they missed the first free throw yeah, they did it was like two or three times where we're like oh it could happen and then then when legend Robertin goes I mean he shoots like 30% from the line in the season I was like it's happening now and it did and uh, everyone was buzzing even they got Jake Heenan on the broadcast did you see that yeah he, he got to him they were giving him a lot of love um, uh, they didn't realize he was actually the owner of Burrow beforehand so yeah we had to feed the information through to him via um, Aaron Emo on the headset to the studio let him know that that is in fact the owner um, and hopefully everyone went down and got a cake when they actually got their free coffee because um, otherwise he's giving away a lot of free coffee. Uh, make sure you go check them out, by the way. Their food's amazing. You got some food there? Yeah, the guy who um, is his main chef, especially on North Street, has had Michelin star training, Joel. Yeah. So get yourself some food, little tasty cakes, and uh, yeah, go from there. We've got producer Dan with us as always. Dan, how are you, sir? Very well, thank you, gents. Feeling the love today. Feeling the love. Down this side of the room, not to spoil what we've got coming up, but a couple of guests on today's pod. And family members, they're here to watch as well. So this side of the room, feeling the love today, Joel. We have a packed studio, uh, <laughs> it, 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 to say the least. It is jam-packed today. And we've got a great show coming up for you. Um, coming up on this week's show, we've got, talking about the two Flyers dubs last week against Newcastle and Manchester. We've got some playoff ticket information coming your way. Plus, we'll be turning the podcast studio into our very own enhanced barbershop. More on that later. But first, it wouldn't be the Flyers podcast without a Flyers guest and joining us on the pod this week is none other than Bristol Flyers floor general Tijon Lucas. Tijon, how's it going? How's it going, guys? Pleasure to be here. I like that floor general. Do you like being called the floor general? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The general, you know, Tev says it all the time, the general. Yeah, <laughs> he is the he is the floor general. Um, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us because I know you're a very busy, busy man right now because, of course, your family are down here to, to visit as well, aren't they? Yeah, man. It's blessed to have my mom my sister able to come down for about a week and a half. Um, they able to catch a few games, uh, see some more scenery, get some nice eats, and you know, see me play. So we were just talking to them, and they were saying they would barely ever would they go on a vacation um, that wasn't somewhere hot. And then you've brought them all the way over to England, mate, yeah. to a cold, cold <laughs> England. I gave them a little warning saying it was going to be a little rainy, but. Uh, <laughs> A little rainy probably was a shortcoming of it. I was going to say, it's literally just started raining as soon as you arrived here today, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It was really sunny this morning. It's crazy. It's yeah. like having two different weathers or like in one season. It's bonkers. That's yeah, it happens England. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you done all the touristy stuff now with the family? Because I know they came down at the start of the season, didn't they? Yeah, uh, we did most of it. I don't think there's too much we haven't seen that's um, been like the historic uh, sceneries and stuff like that. So I think we've seen pretty much everything. Yeah, I know they went um, to watch a few games uh, while they've been down here. They went up to Newcastle Eagles last week to watch that big win. Uh, yeah, my mom and my sister, um, actually my mom got in that same day, I believe, and they actually uh, flew, uh, my mom flew in, my sister got back, and they uh, caught the train up there, and then they rode back with us. Um, uh, it was about 10 other Flyer fans there, but of course, you know, I heard my mom, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, it was a good experience. Um, yeah, it's great. Well, it's been great having them down come visit as well. I know your mom's a big listener of the Bristol Flyers podcast, uh, but it's not just the Bristol Flyers podcast that she is a listener to, because she also listens uh, to the Sunday Night Breakdown podcast with Daniel Routledge and Dave Forrester. Um, and I don't know if she's listened to this week's episode, but she gets a mention on this week's show. Have you, have you listened to the Sunday Night Breakdown I, podcast? I haven't mentioned it, but I have no doubt my mom's seen it um, <laughs> already. Uh, probably has a subscription and a notification <laughs> on her phone. Uh, so she gets a mention on the show, Sam, um, because uh, after the game, she actually met Dave Forrester at the game, and she had a few choice words for Dave Forrester. Uh, take a listen to this. And I was approached by a lady who told me that I was the person that she watched every night and she didn't mention you um, <laughs> on the Sunday breakdown and how I never mentioned Bristol's injuries 
Uh, I never gave them any credit. And I kind of said, I don't normally give anybody any credit. But even <laughs> That's those. true. But Tijon's mother. Okay. Bristol, you whooped ass. <laughs> you took them to the cleaners. You were uh, awesome. Uh, they were they everything to they had to do. They won on the top floor. Give them some props. I'm giving them some props. So Tijon's mom. I was that was the highlight of my week. <laughs> um, actually, being told to give them some props. So I'm going to give them some props and give her some props. Well, and at the end, we finished with a little hug. Just nice. a little. That's nice. He finished with a lovely hug at the end as well. So there you go. Whatever your mum said to um, to, to Dave Forrester, it paid off. We've got to mention on the podcast, there's some credit, some well overdue credit for Bristol Flyers as well. If there's one thing I know about my mom, whatever team I'm on, she's rocking with us to the fullest. And, <laughs> and she's like another coach. And so, I mean, she goes from anywhere from player scouts to introducing herself as another mother on the team to whatever it may be so i'm um, no doubt she said positive things about us because i'm pretty sure uh, i haven't caught the podcast but if she said she they never missed a brist never mentioned bristol then they probably never do <laughs> <laughs> so um but glad they gave us some props um i mean it's been the same thing all season uh we have been battling some things uh, we don't we don't expect nobody to be sorry for us but at the end of the day, um, I think we have been competing and, and battling through a whole lot this year, and we still, you know, came out on top, had a, you know, pretty good uh, European success, and, you know, we've been actually pretty solid in uh, the BBL, um, regardless of what we went through. Yeah, it certainly has been a great season uh, for Flyers. Uh, we'll get onto that a bit later on, but before we do proceed with uh, the rest of this week's uh, podcast, you mentioned at the top of the show, Sam, uh, that this is our Enhanced Barbershop episode. I am so excited. We've been wanting to do this for a little while now, haven't we? Have we have been wanting well? to do this for a little while. It's been on the agenda for a long time. We finally managed to make it work. Uh, now, Tej, you often go down to CJ uh, at the Enhanced Barbershop to get your hair cut. They're a big partner of the Bristol Flyers. Uh, and we thought that we could kill two birds with one stone here because not only could you appear on the Bristol Flyers podcast, but you could also... Uh, get a trim uh, as we turn the studio into our very own enhanced barbershop and it wouldn't be a, a, a enhanced barbershop without our very own barber so please welcome to the podcast from our partners at enhanced barbershop jay morris campbell aka jay the barber aka jay enhanced jay here jay, he comes let's go <laughs> Here he is, uh, TJ. If you could slide that mic over to uh, GA over there, we'll get some words from uh, GA. Jay, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you with us. Uh, you've been a big supporter of the Bristol Flyers the last sort of couple of years, really. Um, and this is your first full year of partnership, isn't it? Yeah, um, I've started watching Flyers about three years ago. Really? Um, I got a pleasure to meet some Flyers players three years ago, so I cut them. And then, yeah, last season, we actually got a quite a good uh, relationship with some of the players which brought on our uh, sponsorship this season yeah it was it's been great having you with us as well what have you made of the the flyers season this year it's good um I've started the season was very good um obviously the injuries have impacted the team but it still looks promising for the playoffs yeah so, it, tell you one thing they may have had their injuries but they all look fly out there on the uh, on the court man thanks to you here a lot of the, who, are the, who are the guys that mainly come down to you then um quite a few guys obviously t john trey john um, VJ was here last season as well. Am I right in thinking also, obviously we've got Caledonia Gladiators coming up this weekend, um, but am I right in thinking in the previous meeting between Flies and Caledonia when they came down to visit, you had uh, Patrick Whelan yeah. come into the uh, barbershop to get a trim. Yeah, Patrick Whelan, um, Th Thomas messaged one of, uh, messaged the account saying that um, someone from the BBL wants a cut. I was fully booked, but someone seemed to Patrick Whelan and he came down, it was pretty cool. He made extra space for Pat Whelan to come in and get his trim uh, at the uh, at the enhanced barbershop. I love that. That's so because they they obviously had travelled down. I think they played Plymouth the day before. They were actually they? in. Um, I think they were in Portugal the day before that. They were away for a whole week, weren't they? And they had to uh, obviously Pat Whelan wanted to get a trim. So where else to go uh, in Bristol to get your hair cut apart from uh, the enhanced barbershop? Uh, TG, obviously this has been new for you this year, and I'll pass the mic back to you here. This has been sort of new for you this year, sort of getting your hair cut. I know like. Um, a lot of people, uh, when it comes to getting your hair cut, are very picky over who gets to cut their hair. But what's um, Jay been like as a barber? Uh, Jay's been great. Um, of course, you know, we both have busy schedules, so we try to fit us in uh, when we can. But at the end of the day, uh, he's picked up the slack from when I 
didn't have a cut. Um, didn't have anybody to get a uh, cut by early in the season. Uh, got recommended by a few of the guys. Noticed that we actually had a sponsorship through them. Um, and after that, everything's been history. It's been great. Um, can't uh, appreciate it enough. Um, without our barbers, you know, who would be yeah, the one? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, what so are you trying to say? You feel like you're having a cut <laughs> me in. I mean... <laughs> I let it speak for itself. Ah, there you go. <laughs> uh, well, so shall we get to it then? Uh, we'll do a bit of a podcast magic. And when we come back, um, T. John Lucas will be getting his hair cut at our very own Enhanced Barbershop right here on the Bristol Flyers podcast. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right, so with a bit of podcast magic, uh, T. John Lucas is in the barbershop chair right here in the studio. Look at it. It's our own podcast Podcast barbershop collaboration is amazing. I'm liking the um the, the uh, what would you call it? It's a gown? Would you call it a gown? Uh, cape. Cape. Yeah, okay. That's my <laughs> cape. Like <laughs> a superhero cape, bro. It's nice. Jay, you ever you ever been filmed doing a haircut before? There's no pressure here on the podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> you no, know, you never been filmed. It's the first time. You see the customers are coming, not me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So there's a first time for everything. Um, no pressure, Jay, mate. All right. Uh, Tej, what do you usually ask for when you get like a trim from Jay? Um, I usually just ask for a lining and a taper, um, and then just shape up the beard and stuff like that. Uh, I ain't really been touching too much of the top of the head um, till I get back home. I think I might cut it off actually when I go. Oh, home. really? So I've been indecisive. My my mom wants me to dread it. My sister likes it long, and I'm like, I might cut it short. So. I don't know what I'm going to do, honestly, but I think I might cut it when I get back home. Yeah, I was going to say, are you looking to grow the top out? But um, there we go. The secret's out. He's going to shave it all off when he goes back home, apparently. Yeah, I might just keep it a little dark and just where I can make it either wavelength or just, you know, sponge it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, Jay, we'll let you crack on with the uh, with the trim. And whilst he does so, the last time we had you on the, uh, on the podcast, uh, it was near the beginning of the season, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was probably one of the first guys to get on the podcast, and I mean, I know I did that Christmas special with you guys, but um, yeah, I think I was one of the first. Yeah, I mean, what have you made? Talk to us about what you made of your time in Bristol so far, because like um, it, you've had um, that two-month injury layoff, um, so it's been a bit of a mixed season on the court as a whole, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously uh, I battled uh, that injury earlier this year, uh, set me out for about two months. Um, it was unfortunate for our team, especially the timing, and uh, I think I was starting to get a groove, and then, you know, obviously Keedy went down about a week or two before that. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's part of the game. Just had to overcome adversity, and um, I think we're starting to pick up a little stride now and make a run in the playoffs. And looking at your sort of, you know, away from the court, the time away from the court, has, has your experience in Bristol been everything you expected it to be? Because obviously this is your rookie season and it can be quite intimidating, I guess, for rookies sort of to come to a country they've never come to before for the very first time. Uh, it's been great, um, especially riding in the Bristol Mobile and everyone knows who we are uh, <laughs> with Bristol basketball <laughs> on the side. Uh, you know, the fan engagement and love is, uh, is surreal and, you know, I can't be thankful enough for Coach K giving me this opportunity to play here in Bristol for my first year, and it's been great. I can't have no complaints. Um, it's been a little cold, but I'm used to the cold. <laughs> yeah. It's from Milwaukee, so it has nothing on Milwaukee, but, I mean, the rain is probably what gets me the most. It's, it's not really sunny that much here, so, <laughs> yeah. you know. I know one of the things you have been doing uh, off the court is uh, you've been a fine member of the COD squad. Uh, of course, now, uh, we mentioned the COD squad a few weeks ago. Um, it was me, Max Cooper, Leslie Smith, T. John Lucas, Keely Johnson, and RGB. Uh, I got the invite on WhatsApp to join the COD squad. And uh, T. John over here is a fine member of the team, Sam. Yeah, man, we got us a nice little squad on Call of Duty. Uh, we probably play every day. <laughs> uh, to Do you be actually? Fair. Yeah, to be fair, we probably play every day. Uh, I'm pretty sure Joel is like working and his he hears like his phone buzz off like, hey, <laughs> oh my anyone goodness. on? Anyone on? And they're probably hitting the group chat right now seeing who's on right now. So 
Well, let's have a load up of the, of the uh, COD squad, shall we? Um, here we go. Last night, 11.30 at night, T. John Lucas asked, anyone on? Uh, and Keely Johnson responded at 11.42 p.m., I am, to which uh, T. John Lucas responded with a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> so you can see. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. Um, and I think the, the guys who play the most is me, Keely, and Les. Uh, we probably play the most. And then um, we've added Joel. Joel's been a great uh, company with us, you know, but, you know, Joel has other busy things he's doing. And then and, you know, Max and Pasquale gave it a run, but he hasn't he's been dodging us for a while. I think he he went back to the um, the other game. So who's the best on the cold squad? Do you reckon? Oh, it's Les. Yeah, by far. He does carry a team, doesn't he? Yeah. Les can take out a whole squad by himself. And he can, I tell him all the time you should stream. But I, I keep seeing that on the um, he posted a video on Insta yesterday. yesterday on Instagram. Yeah, loads yeah. of videos, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He has plenty of video. He, he'll make you look stupid like. <laughs> He's one of those guys where um, on Call of Duty, if you get killed by him, you might, like, throw your controller and be like, all right, I'm done playing the game. Like, I don't want to play the game anymore. It's bedtime now. Yeah, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> Jay, I know you've got a um, uh, a PlayStation in the uh, in the barbershop, right? A PS4 in the barbershop. What's the what's the go-to game in the in the barbershop? Um, often, um, most of the time, it's just FIFA, to be fair. Yeah. Yes. Who, game. The only game. We've actually played on the PlayStation 4, I think, once when we were... In, in the, the barber shop. shop. Yeah. I think so, and a few of you came in. Yeah, we. it was like me, TJ, Keedy, and a couple other guys, and we uh, played 2K um, and Madden, I think. So. Who's the best player at 2K on the team? Um, I would say between Keedy and Tevo. Yeah. Um, I used to be good, and then I stopped playing it because it's just too fake for me. Like, I shouldn't have to time a layup from Giannis onto the Kumpo <laughs> on Stephen Curry. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand why I'm missing a layup on Steph Curry on a video game when Steph wouldn't even get in Giannis's way in real life. So it's <laughs> like, it's kind of deceptive to me. And then it's hard to shoot on there. If you don't know how to shoot on 2K, like, you're not going to make shots. And so it's kind of tough. Yeah. I think, in, in the nicest way, it is not the best realistic like video game for sport is it it's just not it's quite slow and jaggedy yeah and and the computer does things like foul like like i'm not fouling but the computer fouls and that makes me upset like why would the computer be fouling like i don't understand <laughs> that like the computer gets three seconds in the lane like why are you sitting in the lane like, it doesn't make sense to me <laughs> jay I, I imagine it can get quite uh, competitive when the flyers lads are in playing on the uh, the playstation in the barbershop right yeah that when um, everyone was there Three people were shouting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, video games, it gets serious. It you, gets serious. Do you ever put money on the line when you guys play each other? Do you ever put like oh, a little tenner on the on the line, or you put like dinner on the line, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, sometimes for sure. But some guys don't be that confident, and then you then you know you got them before <laughs> the game even starts. <laughs> I love it. I love to see it. Uh, Producer Dan, are you big on your video games at all? Ah. Uh, Sometimes I go through phases. FIFA annoys me. I feel like me and um, me and Tijon will agree on sports games. Like they do get a bit, they they drag you down in the end. Like you with 2K, me with FIFA. I get a bit fed up with it, really. Jay, talk to us about um, you know it's not just the Flyers guys that come in to your shop, is it? We were just talking off air. You've had a number of sort of other sporting stars come in, haven't you? Yeah. Um. Right now I've got a few of the Bristol Bear guys. And I got a few of the Rivers guys as well. Shut the Bears names down. Which ones you got? Name them. Name them. Um, I got the Benz twins. I got Kofi. I got Rick Rama. And um, I can't pronounce his last name. Um, Naolugu. Yeah. N uh, Nualago? <laughs> Siva <laughs> Naolago. Siva. Go. Siva. We, we see him Siva. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, producer Dan. Another another one that we were talking about off air is uh, I'm a, a bit of a Liverpool fan when it comes to football, and um, Kwanzaa uh, is sort of he he came from Bristol Rovers Academy, didn't he? Or at least he was on loan there last year. And then this year we've had there's been a few injuries, and Kwanzaa's been stepping in as centre back, like as a young what is he 19, 20? Yeah, a young young man. And uh, you you were cutting Kwanzaa's hair recently, is that right? Yeah, when he was at Rovers, um, I was cutting him, and I'm due to go up. North, I don't know the car up there. Oh really? They, 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 like drive you up there? They, like send the car for you? And go, you go up there and be like, right, that's we're it. We're bringing in Jay. We'll get him in and we'll get the trims done. Where do they do that? They won't do that at the training ground, right? No, no, no. no. I'll probably go to his house and do it. That is sick. You guys, yeah. you guys want to know something crazy though? Like yeah. in the states, so a lot of D1 colleges actually have like a barbershop inside the locker room. Did they no actually? No way. Yeah. So like they'll have like 
a team barber like Jay, and he'll have his like own station inside of the locker room. What do you think, Jay? Do you reckon we get one of those in the new Flyers arena down the line? Definitely, (laughs) definitely. That's and what that's their full time job there, and they do just you guys, or do they just come for like game day or or whatever? Uh, They would just pull up for game day. That of course they have like their own shop for regular business hours, but um, usually on game days they'll just come and give guys the chopping. I know you probably see it, especially with football. They have so much space. Um, I know at BYU they have like custom locker room where they have a place for just a barber to come and cut guys and really stuff. and you and you have that done yourself at college as well when you were yeah, there yeah there there's there's definitely that really how no often way. were you how often were they sort of coming in and getting giving you a trim um they would be there probably pretty much every game if you need them to be really um, you just have to ask them and they'll see if they have time most of the time they don't have anything and that's what i try to do is try to get it cut there or a lot of times guys like house cuts as well uh you know pay a little extra just for them to Come and do it at the house. Who would pay the um the the, the barber there? Would would the actual college pay for them, or would you guys? Uh, just yeah, use they them? they actually give them uh money for that. No wow, way. that's incredible. Uh, Jay, I imagine you've been uh, called out to a lot of different places um in your um in your barber career. Uh, is this the uh, most strangest place you've been called out to to cut someone's hair? Yeah, this is probably the <laughs> strangest place to be seen. <laughs> this is right up there, live on a podcast, right here. Tej, we're talking uh you know about your sort of Flyers experience, and obviously before you um joined the Flyers, everyone would know that uh, you originally grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, one guy who obviously you would have known, I guess, uh, from your time growing up. Well, Levi Bradley, right? Is that right? Yeah, actually, I've been knowing Levi since we were little kids. Um, his mother actually worked with my aunt in a hair salon, and actually been. Well, see, with basketball in the states, it's very small if you're good. Everyone knows you if you're good, and so growing up, I knew Levi. He played on another AAU team. Um, he's obviously a, a year two older, so, but definitely knew him for a while. Uh, been been loving our relationship you know he's like a brother to me and been knowing him for forever so when he came and joined the club uh, it was just like another brother coming on the team when did you find out he was joining did you get told before he arrived or not uh, i actually didn't coach told he told me he didn't tell me on purpose so i didn't talk to him oh really but he uh the day he announced it to us in the locker room i called him right away i was like hey man i didn't know you was coming to bristol he's like yeah i couldn't talk to you coach told me not to say nothing <laughs> <laughs> why did he do that like, any reason uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes you don't want to spoil it before the media gets to it and stuff like that. And you don't know, you know, word travels fast. So at the end of the day, you know, it was good and just happy he's here. Yeah, it is great having Levi back. What was he like um, growing up? What was he like uh, when you were playing against him growing up? Uh, he was same player, you know, great guy, um, great player. You know, he played on a Wisconsin United. It was actually one of our rivals in Milwaukee. And I played on Milwaukee Spartans, and we were probably like the two best programs at the time. Um, and so it was pretty good, you know, no, have no hard complaints. I love that. You know, my local league team here is called Bristol Spartans. Really? Yeah, boy. The <laughs> Bristol Spartans. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and, and is this the first time you guys are actually playing together on the same team? Because obviously you guys went to different colleges. Is this the first time you guys are actually playing together now? Yeah, this is actually the first time. It's crazy because in Milwaukee, I pretty much play with everybody from all ages and especially the good ones. And Levi is probably one of the few that I haven't had a chance to play with. And so it's been great to play with him. And I think we, you know, I, I think I know his game to a certainty to where I can, you know, find him on the court and help him out and stuff like that. And he's able to compliment me. So yeah. I think it's been great. He's added some nice this year, hasn't he? His mid range is naughty, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His mid range is kind of crazy. We, if I see a mismatch on him, I kind of try to feed him. I force feed him. Really? Uh, yeah, just like with Brad. If I see a small on him, I try to force feed him because I know there's nothing they can do. Give Brad the ball, yeah, and he will score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess another player that uh, <laughs> that you may know. I don't know if you might know him, but he obviously used to play for Flyers in the 2014-15 season from Milwaukee. Uh, is a guard called uh, Burkis Perrine. Do you recognize the name? It sounds familiar. Bree Perrine. Bree Perrine. Yeah, I know who Bree is. Bree. Yeah, yeah, so we used to obviously is. his full name yeah. is Burkis, but like yeah. we used to just call him Bree. You know, how, how do you know yeah. Bree? Uh, just the basketball world, honestly. I think I just actually watched. He's in Milwaukee right now training and doing some stuff with some kids and just doing a great job giving back and helping the kids in the community. Yeah. Um, but 
another lefty. Yeah, another he is. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> another great player. You know, played with him in the summer. You know, when the guys come home in the summertime. At that time, I was still in college, and he was older, playing professional. We would just play, run, do runs, get up and down the floor, play five on five, and yeah, you know, just another great guy and a great mentor and somebody I can talk to about basketball and stuff like that. Bree came into our season uh, midway through the 2014-15 season, which is our first year in the British Basketball League. We actually uh, picked up an injury to our starting point guard back then. You remember Doug Herring? Yep. Uh, he got he got injury, uh, tore his meniscus actually, and we brought in Bree Perrine. And uh, it's quite fitting actually, because we've got Caledonia Gladiators this weekend. There was a play uh, where is Gareth Murray was playing for Plymouth Raiders at the time. No way. And uh, it was like an open lane and Bree just drives straight downhill like and just lefty jams it uh it just blows past gareth murray <laughs> is there a video of it yeah there's a video uh, it sounds, sounds like brie yeah. that sounds like brie <laughs> it was on the flyers youtube we actually made the playoffs that year it was our first year in the british basketball league and we reached the playoffs in our debut season and andreas won coach of the year that year as well i love that what was um coach murray's beard like back then joe uh it was a bit shorter he actually yeah he had yeah it was a bit shorter than it is now yeah he's definitely grown it out since, since the um since the coaching career has started best beard in the league best beard in the league 100 percent yeah I hear that you can tell how old Gareth Murray is by how beard, how big his beard <laughs> is growing. Oh, really? That's like a tree, yeah. like a tree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Tej, talk to us about the, uh, the the upcoming playoffs. Uh, are you looking for any particular matchups, or are you just sort of letting the chips fall where they may? Honestly, the way we've been playing, we're ready for any kind of matchup. <clears throat> um, I think we've been hitting a good stride with our last five games. I think we won four out of our last five, and that's a bit been against four out of five of the top teams in the league also so um, right now I think we're just in hitting some good momentum right now and we're just prepared for anything yeah and this season it's moving to like a, a three game series this year uh, which I think is better Sam because obviously the aggregate score wasn't a massive fan of the aggregate score last year no, what it means, I mean, there's pros and cons both ways because you could have a freak game where a team that are supposedly supposed to lose to the other team like blow them out and then it would be tough for them to come back. But I suppose in this instance, like that other team that has two more chances to come back. But I think it's better for, um, often the game is the game. It's, it's, it's your, you know, you're in that game. If there's an aggregate score, it messes with your head. It did, I bet with Europe, it changed the way you played slightly and messed with your head in that final game. What do you think, T? Um, I think towards the end, you start thinking about it a lot uh, we tried to just take five minutes at a time and then of course you know you look up fourth quarter you're like all right we're down like seven we got to make a little run here but um, it's my first time experience with aggregate score so you know it was a new experience for me but I mean it was all right I have no complaints yeah we well, be pleased to know it is going to a three game series best of three game series uh, for the British Basketball League playoffs uh, just a quick rundown on how the playoffs work for the podcast listener so as you say it is the best of three uh, the highest seed gets home court advantage in game three if necessary uh, they also actually Sam get to decide uh, which all of the games play which makes ticketing a nightmare because we don't know who we're playing and then we don't know whether they want game one at home or whether they want game two at home do you think if you were to choose Joel if you were the highest seed where would you pretend uh, and we actually can't end the highest seed so it doesn't really matter for us but do you think you'd choose play away first play away first yeah 100% finish it off at your place game one away and then you've got game two at home and game three at home if necessary I think yeah. otherwise you're going there back and then there and back again yeah. whereas you go there and back and then that's what you got to do yeah, travel wise do you see what you, I mean yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah the, the, the highest seed gets to decide uh, which order the game one and game two go in in terms of home and away uh, we are expecting our home game to take place on Friday May 3rd at the SGS College Arena but uh, it, depending on opponent it could also be Friday 26th or Saturday 27th of April the most likely scenario mark your calendars Flyers fans is Friday May 3rd by the time this podcast comes out season ticket holders and members will be able to buy their tickets right now over at bristolflyers.co.uk the final date of the home game and the opponent will be officially confirmed after the last game of the regular season uh, which takes place on Sunday night and if you're a season ticket holder don't worry your seat will be reserved to buy up until 5 p.m. on Monday April 22nd so that's after the opponent and the date is officially being confirmed you have an extra few hours after that to go and buy your ticket before that then gets released on general sale so if you don't buy if you're a season ticket holder and you don't buy your ticket uh, by 5 p.m on monday april 22nd that ticket will get released general sale reminder it's not a season ticket holder game it's an all pay game so season ticket holders uh and members will have to buy a ticket for this game 
Uh, and I don't know if I told you, Sam, uh, tickets for this go like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> such a, so they, they will also, go though hotcakes. I remember last year in the playoffs, the tickets flew out the door. It was like six hours after going on general sale, they were all gone. But remember, we were in the office and they went on sale at I think ten a.m. and by eleven a.m. something like eighty percent of them had gone, yep, hadn't they? Yep, yep. They were they were gone quickly. So um, if you want to get tickets for this game, I would suggest getting them as soon as you possibly can. Uh, right, Tijon, it is time for us to get to our quickfire questions segment of the podcast. Do you remember how many questions you got right or how many questions you answered last time you did this? Mm. No. 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 We should no. have done our homework. No, I, I, don't know. I can't remember. Six, probably? Yeah, just, let's just say six. Producer Dan can't remember either. But the score to beat is 11, apparently. Have you got the lights down low, please? There we go. Lovely stuff. Uh, right, T. John, don't get nervous. Uh, you're gonna have 30 seconds on the clock uh, to answer as many questions as you possibly can. Your time starts now. Uh, what do you prefer, summer or winter? Summer. What dish do you cook the best? Chicken. Who is the toughest player you've ever had to guard? Trey Jefferson. What's your favorite place to eat in Bristol? Um, Vibe. Black playing socks, yes or no? No. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Just finished the gentleman. How many tattoos do you have? Uh, 17. Name a country that you've always wanted to visit. Spain. What's your favorite arena to play in? Newcastle. Newcastle Eagles. There we go. That's so interesting that you've been watching yourself on Netflix right now. The general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said the gentleman. Not oh, the general. Oh, the general. Gentleman. Oh, general. Oh, the gentleman. The yeah, gentleman. nice. Um, I'll tell you what I'm watching on Netflix right now. Um, I'm watching this show about, uh, it's, like, it's like a prison documentary and they basically open the jail cells for all the inmates to like create a community. But like normally they're locked away for like 23 out of 24 hours a day, and this like experiment where they, the guards will go out of the of the jail and they'll just open the doors, and the the, the inmates have to like create this community. So they have a fight. Uh, well, I've only I'm only one episode in right now, so I'll let oh, you know okay. how it goes there. But it, it's really I can't remember what it's called, but watch it on Netflix if you can. It's really really good. I I was listening to you, Joe, but I just saw Jay doing something well weird, and I wanted to see what he was doing. What were you spraying him with? Um, it's alcohol. What it smells it? really nice. Can I have a bit on me? <laughs> it's alcohol spray. <laughs> <laughs> shush! Give a little, give a little shush, Sam. Ooh! <laughs> yeah, nice. Amazing. That smells really nice, that does. Yeah, sorry, Joel. You were saying something cool, but I was well intrigued about what was going on over there. Oh, that smells, that's strong as well. Yeah, it does. It smells yeah, really fresh good. Fresh water. Now in it, it in smells like a barbershop in here. <laughs> that's the smell I was looking for. Well, it's officially a barbershop now. Looks like um, T. John Lucas has finished his haircut. Have a look at that. I'll tell you what, T. you are looking very fresh right now. What'd you make of that, T. Jay don't miss. <laughs> he doesn't miss. <laughs> he doesn't miss. Get a close up on that, producer Dan. We'll do a before and after of T. John Lucas going into the barbershop. Hey, the, yo. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Bristol Flyers Enhanced Barbershop delivers. Give it a little side, give it a little side profile there, T. Give us a little side on. Oh yes. And the other side, please. Oh, snap. Incredible. <laughs> Jay. Lock up your daughters, Bristol. <laughs> Come back into frame. <laughs> Come back into frame here, Jay. Incredible. That You did that under pressure right there on the Flyers podcast. How did you find it? It's very different to being in the shop. Obviously, I don't have my mirror in front of me, but I had to get it done. I was going to say, you did it without a mirror and everything. Incredible. Now it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting, Sam? Let's take it all off. Oh, can you imagine? That would be horrendous. Sorry, mate. Yeah, You're not, yeah, not, not happening, okay? <laughs> Amazing. Well, Jay, we appreciate you coming on the Flyers podcast. Thanks for hooking up uh, Tijon Lucas right here. You've done a fine job. Uh, and Tij is now ready for Friday's game against the Caledonia Gladiators. Yes, sir. Look good. Play good. You're going to be at the game on Friday? Oh, I won't be, unfortunately. Oh, you won't be able to see the trim in action. <laughs> we'll send be you some watching. photos. I'll be watching. I'll be watching. <laughs> there you go. You'll be watching on YouTube. Remind you, you can watch that game on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. on Friday night on Brist uh, British Basketball League YouTube channel. So professional. <laughs> uh, Jay, thank you so much for joining us on the Flyers podcast. Thank you. Uh, we'll let you go. And uh, with a bit of podcast magic, uh, we'll get back to the rest of the episode. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast.
Hey, Flyers fans, this is the part of the show where we give a huge thank you to our podcast sponsor, Web Gains. We've got Rob over there in the house, and uh, without their support, this podcast would not be possible. Now, Web Gains is the smart affiliate marketing network who have an unbelievable track record when it comes to empowering advertisers and publishing partners to reach their potential and achieve game-changing results. They connect businesses with top affiliates who can promote your products and services, reaching a wider audience and driving more revenue. And here's the best bit, Flyers fans. WebGains provides you with detailed reports and analytics to track the performance of your affiliate marketing campaigns, making it easy to see the results of your hard work and investments. But don't just take our word for it. Here's Rob from WebGains to tell you more. Did you know that last year affiliates helped sell 12 billion worth of products for British brands and every one pound spent on affiliate marketing by advertisers also known in our channel as retailers, returned an average of £12.40. That is actually crazy when you spend £1. You get £12 <laughs> you get back. £12.40 back. It's so good. It's, it's a good amazing. De- it's a good deal, isn't it? And not only are WebGain sponsors of the Bristol Flyers podcast, but their company logo is also once again on the front of our home and away playing shorts, inspiring the team to make smarter connections, just like they do for thousands of brands on their international affiliate network. So if you're ready to skyrocket your online presence and drive more sales, visit webgains.com and see how they can assist you in the world of affiliate marketing. That's webgains.com, W-E-B-G-A-I-N-S.com. Give your business the assist it needs with WebGains Affiliate Network. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Well, that was something a little bit different, wasn't it, Sam? He's looking fresh as well. Are you happy with the trim? Hey, looking good, man. <laughs> Jay, he does not miss. He don't miss. Oh, well, that was incredible. We did a little before and after. We put that little split screen. Do you do you believe that? Look good, play good. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, thanks. shout out to Jay for coming in. And if you want to go uh, check out uh, Enhanced Barbers, you can do. They're on Instagram. Uh, you head to the website. You can book as well. Uh, but, Sam, it's time for us to get to this week's news. And uh, we've got to start by saying a huge congratulations to the London Lions women, who, of course, lifted the Euro Cup last week. Unbelievable scenes, Joel. It was uh, so good, wasn't it? They're the first British team to ever win a European title. Uh, Tish, did you get a chance to watch this game uh, yeah, we actually were at dinner and uh, about three or four of the guys, we were all just watching it on our phone. Uh, you know, of course, we were cheering them on as uh, affiliate affiliate to the British Basketball League. And yeah. so, you know, we just was excited as just as them. And it was actually a great game at the end. It was. Back it was really forth, close. Back and forth. Yeah. And, um, just, you know, super happy for the ladies and just glad they were able to get the win. Yeah. You think they were playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, Joel, or not? What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, we could talk about it, I guess. Um uh, you know, the, the news obviously came out that the, the funding was going to be dropped by 777 for the women's team to not enter European competition um, next year. And um, <laughs> that's a shame. I'd, I'd, I'd hate to see them no longer compete in Europe because obviously if you win the Euro Cup, you get the invite to EuroLeague. Do you think now that's happened that they'll go back on it or do, have they not said anything? I really hope so. Obviously, there's no news that's come out, but I do hope whether they whether 777 continue to fund it or whether they can find a new funder to get involved. It just shows what can be possible if you put money into basketball, into the, our game in the country. You know, If you invest in our sport, um, it's just a perfect example. And you look at the game, I mean, it was packed out, copper box, completely sold out for a women's game. Obviously, coming off the hype of the, you know, the women's NCAA tournament has been a big talking point. Obviously, the WNBA draft was yeah. last night. Like, oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's a, it's a huge buzz around women's basketball right now, uh, not only in the States, but over here in the UK as well, off the back of London Lions women. Um, and I'd hate to see that like momentum stop. So hopefully they can find someone uh, to do it uh, and, get, and, you know, pump some cash into the team to help them, you know, continue their, their story. Um, it, it, say what you want about aggregate scoring, by the way. I mean, it was, um, a, four, it was a four point aggregate win in the end. And, you know, it was a double digit lead for them at the cover box but you wouldn't get that kind of tense finish if it wasn't for aggregate basketball I mean, and and that's that's I suppose that's quite kind of why I do like it a little bit, Joel. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? It does change the mindset. It's like when we did the Elam ending um, at the beginning of last season yeah. for the for the preseason. It's just it's something else, something a bit different. I quite like it, but hey, there you go. Yeah. Well, shout out to London Lions women. Uh, a massive moment for basketball in this country to put us on the European map. 
Uh, let's talk about the two games for Flyers last weekend. Uh, of course, Flyers going 2-0 and o in both of the games. Juice Dan, did you get a chance to watch your Flyers fix this week? I didn't, unfortunately. I didn't you get never to... watch Flyers, I swear. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I, I said I watched last week. I just didn't uh, get to see this week. Oh, uh, okay. I swear every time I asked Dan on. that question, he's like, oh, it's I saw busy, bits of it. Too busy watching wrestling is what's going on, really. <laughs> hey, come on now, come on now. Do you know what? That first game against Newcastle was 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 wild, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a fun one. Um, uh, obviously, we were down early uh, mm. and down late uh, to start the fourth quarter. And I think the guys just stayed composed at the end of the day, and we were able to um, get the win. You know, we stayed composed, you know, believed in ourselves, believed in what we had going on, and we were able to get the win. Yeah, I mean, it was the game that flies pretty much trailed for the majority of the game. Uh, but you guys were able to keep in there, hang in there. That's what coach said after the game. You know, we're just able to stick around, find a way to stick around. And at the end of the game, we've managed to put go on a run. I mean, you look at the uh, the first half. We, we turned the ball over a fair bit in the first half. Newcastle 12 points off of turnovers in the first period. It was actually tied at 39 at the half, uh, which considering the way we was playing, I was looking at the scoreboard like, how are we still in this game? Were they just missing? missing a few shots do you think they missed free throws oh yeah. my goodness oh. they missed a lot of free throws at the line let's just say that um it was lucky the coffee thing wasn't happening at that game because the flyers <laughs> yeah. went 20 from 20 from the line so, you know you might have games where people go like seven from seven or whatever but 20 is another is crazy isn't it yeah we'll take it we'll yeah. take it you guys are locked in out there um not only that joel it was a 37 point fourth quarter yeah well we found ourselves in a what a 14 point hole uh, in the um uh, there's a 14 nothing run in the third that Newcastle went on. It took a double digit lead, and then Flyers responded with a 9 nothing run. And as you say, 37 fourth quarter points. Um, incredible. Um, and TJ over here tying the game from deep with a minute to go. Ice nice. in the veins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What goes through your mind in that sort of situation? I mean, they left you wide open there. Yeah, but what, what goes through your mind in that situation? You still got to knock down the shot, though, right? In a tough place to play. Yeah, I mean, you really don't. Think about all that stuff when you're playing. You're just worried about making the right play and the right decision. And I mean, I was open, and so I took the shot. I really wasn't looking at the. I mean, I knew the score, but I wasn't like, oh man, like it's a big shot. It's you got it. It's the same shot I would take in the first half. Yeah. And so it's the same important. Yeah. Do, and you, I, do you catch the ball and go? Why am I so open? Like, do you even think about that? You just go, ah, oh, boom. Um, um, not really. Uh, sometimes it does play effect. You're like, man, I'm. So open, yeah. But, you know, you know, you hear the J.R. Smith. You know, some guys only shoot better when they're contested. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like at the end of the day, you know, you just got to focus in, knock it down, and shoot it like you shoot every other shoot. Yeah. Um, how about Keely Johnson? By the way, he came up with some big clutch shots down the stretch. I mean, he had a st uh, like, a, like a ridiculous and one to foul out Defoe as well, wasn't yeah, it? it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Keely was playing good. Uh, he's been having a great stretch in games. Uh, great being playing great all year and. Um, you know, he took over a little bit in the fourth quarter for us, you know, got the foe fouled out, you know, hit a couple clutch baskets. Um, obviously, the pass to me uh, to hit the three and then mm -hmm. the pass to Tevo to hit take us up one, another yeah. one. And so at the end of the day, um, Kitty's been playing well. Um, and I just like what he's been doing. Yeah, he's finally his form at the right point of the season. Things we love to see, love building it. that momentum going into the uh, the playoffs. Um, Tevin Ollison led the way, 21 points. Uh, incredible fourth quarter from Keady. Had player of the game, 18 points, five rebounds, three assists. Levi Bradley with 14. Tijon over here with 13. Uh, and no surprises here, Sam. Uh, Brad Green. Double-double. 10 points, 12 <laughs> rebounds. He just, eats them. he just eats them up, doesn't he? Well, that is a, that's, that's close. Ten points. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Uh, so, yeah. Where's the sound? <laughs> Play the sound, Sam. Play the sound. I need the little board bag because it makes it quicker. But Hey, yo. <laughs> that, that, that sound, by the way, is actually uh, Tevin Ollison for the listener. That is Tevin Ollison from last week's episode saying, hey, yo. We're going to keep that forever, though. And now. we have kept it in the, uh, the, the sound board. Uh, let's move on to Sunday's game. Um, Manchester Giants at home. Flyers back at home. Uh, they dominated the game this one, really. 20 point win in the end very comfortable it was a I'd, it was a weird game because it never felt it never felt hard from our perspective i don't know how you guys felt from your perspective it just felt like they didn't turn up uh, yeah it was kind of a tricky one uh you know they're they're one of the teams that very few teams that didn't make the playoffs um of course they're suffering from a few injuries as well so they were shorthanded and you know it's towards the end of the year and you know we just wanted to keep building something um of course it was kind of weird you know it just was a weird vibe about the game but i'm just happy we were able to pull out the win and 
of course, a 20-point win. We'll take it any day of the week. Yeah, the game did start quite slow, as you said. It was a bit of a weird vibe to it. It felt a bit scrimmagey early on. And then coach called that early timeout in the first quarter, and you guys responded to that to really create separation in the second. What would he say to you guys to really get you guys to focus and lock in in you know, that timeout? Um, he was just saying we got to play our game no matter the score and no matter who they have over there. We got to um, prepare for the future. You know, we got to get uh, – you know, keep making strides to being better and get ready for the playoffs. And so at the end of the day, he wants us to be playing our best basketball at the end of the season. And they were in our way, and so we had to bring it out. You made a really tasty little assist to Brad early on in the game, you know, the little boop across the... A little touch pass. Yeah, so nice, little touch pass, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I tried to feed my guys, man. Yeah. Had to keep everybody happy, especially the big fella. I'll tell you what, they, <laughs> did, they, they didn't really read the scouting report in that game because they left Levi Bradley wide open for, like, a number of looks in that first... Well, throughout uh, the game, I mean, and he, I, I know he didn't knock them down, but that's literally fair, his shot. I mean, to be fair, he, they did a good job. I mean, he did do it one for ten. <laughs> I, mean, I can talk trash because that's Levi, so he already know. <laughs> I mean, even coach was saying today, Levi, let's practice making some shots today. Yeah. That, was, that was a crazy thing, though. We actually hit shots from like 25 threes in the first half, and we only scored two. Yeah, but a lot of them were like, shoot, it was like a shooting drill at times. Like, you get you shoot a ball, and then like all of a sudden, Brad gets a rebound, and sometimes you get two or three attempts at yeah. three to at the like the same spot, down. and you're like, man, like, what's going on? <laughs> it's like a shooting drill. It literally is like a shooting drill. Um, so, yeah, it was a tough one. Um, but uh, created separation in the second, and then uh, let's talk about the ridiculous chase down block from Keedy in the third quarter on Nicholas Lewis by the way he's playing volleyball out there oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I actually kind of saw Keedy um, behind me and I didn't want to foul so I just jumped straight up it, I know one time that actually happened uh, Newcastle he was like man you gotta go, let me go get that I'm like alright 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 all right, I, right, I got you <laughs> so then next game uh, it happened yeah. He almost jumped, like, it was almost like he jumped so high, and then it was like, right, now I've got to block it down here, rather yeah. than, like, it was crazy, wasn't it? I feel for the fans that were sat in the front row, because that ball almost went, it went zipping past their head. Um, you know, it was, they were sat literally behind a basket, and, you know, it went, that was, you know, you're in the splash zone when you're sat in that section, yeah, aren't you? It's dangerous over there, especially yeah. floor seats. I mean, I, I threw a cross-court pass to Levi, and it hit wall yeah 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 yeah. i remember that as well there was um there was um two fans that just went zipping the, the guy literally went you saw him go vroom, and move out the way so it's good reactions from them hey the fans getting their money's worth you know uh, it's all part of the experience uh and then uh flyers led the game by as many as uh oh actually by the way end of the third quarter tj knocking down another half court shot we had Keedy do it from three quarter court a couple weeks ago then how about another one this time from trajan jacob i mean we just practiced them today at the end of practice. Yeah. I mean, we're, make, we're you make any him. today? Les made it today. Ah, nice. Apparently, coaches stopped taking the team to Nando's after the half court shots because you keep making so many in the games. Too good at them. Yeah, they was going to run out of chicken. <laughs> they were going to run out of chicken. <laughs> um, flies to the game by as many as 31 points. It was a 21, uh, 20 point win in the end, uh, 87 67. Uh, Tevin Ollison, 24.6 rebounds. Keedy and Trajan with 15 points apiece. Brad Green, 13 points. Guess how many rebounds, Sam? 11. 10. 8. He had 8. Oh. Yeah, he had 8. He had eight. So no double double for Brad in the second no game. No way! Is that true? It was a rare game where Brad didn't get double double. Yeah. In a game that he like absolutely was a mismatch the whole game. And the game that we were getting loads of rebounds. Yeah. <laughs> So he had eight rebounds, wow. apparently, according to the stats, anyway. Um, so no double-double for Brad. It means Flyers improved to 16-19 and 19 heading into the final game of the regular season against Caledonia Gladiators on Friday. Uh, how are preparations going this week? Uh, it's been great. Um, we had, uh, obviously, yesterday um, to get our bodies back together today. You know, we took more steps and, you know, watching the scout, watching film, um, going over tendencies and the game plan. And I think it's going to be a good and fun match. Yeah. Friday night, uh, 7.30 p.m. You can watch that game for free on the British Basketball League YouTube. Tickets for that game are sold out. Uh, other news to get to, shout out for Tevin and Keedy, both being named in British Basketball League Team of the Week. Third week in a row for Keedy Johnson. Uh, I love it, Keedy. Um, so great, great stuff to see. More news for you, Sam. I've got an update on podcast merch from Anna Jagger, oh, uh, our partners at Loyal to the Game. Uh, we've had a conversation off air, and uh, it's going to be a project. Project I think we look at for next season. Okay. Uh, however, uh, she actually reached out to both of us uh, because she wanted to gift us um, a new hoodie from Loyal to the Game. Um, she actually messaged us asking both Sam and I separately what color we wanted. Uh, what color do you go for, Sam? Um, I'll, I'll show you, Joe. What color did you go for? Well, let me get it out here. Put it in my bag. Three, two, one. 
We've got the same colour. <laughs> <laughs> we're having the same colour hoodie. We don't... Of course. Of course, that's all we do. We don't even know that. We're in the same colour polo right now. We yeah, went for the we, same we colour. planned that. Yeah, we just didn't plan these. Great minds think alike. But uh, shout out Anna for the lovely loyal to the game hoodie that Sam and I will be rocking very soon. Uh, we appreciate your support and we look forward to um, collaborating on some podcast merch at some point down the line. So watch this space. Um, <laughs> oh, flip. I just see what's on the notes for next, Joel. Here's something that caught my eye from last weekend. Uh, has anyone seen two Plymouth City Patriots players wandering around <laughs> Bristol Airport lately? Oh, my <laughs> goodness me. Tishan, did you hear about this? Yeah, apparently, um, <laughs> some apparently. guys were left in a hotel or something at well, No, they weren't left in a hotel. They weren't left in a hotel. Really? They went through security. Mm. They were waiting in the boarding lounge, and they didn't get on the flight. That wow. is crazy. Like, yeah, honestly, that, that is crazy. So a bit of background story for the listener. Uh, Plymouth City Patriots travelled up to face the Caledonia Gladiators on Sunday afternoon. Uh, they flew up from Bristol Airport on the day. Uh, but when they landed in Glasgow, there were two players missing. Is that uh, how long? Did they find out then or had they found out? I mean, I would oh, I'd love to find out, though, when they actually found out they weren't with the team. How do you miss a plane? Right? Well, I, I was going to ask, have you ever been part of a team that's, you know, someone's missed a plane? Nah, <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. Someone, nah. Isn't that someone's job to make sure everyone's on the plane? Well, well, imagine Mike. So. Mike, in your scenario, Mike would be like counting heads, wouldn't he? Oh yeah, Mike exactly. counts the heads as soon as we get on the bus, as soon as yep. we get off the bus, as soon as you get in the locker room. Like, I, don't, yep. I, don't know. I mean, you had one job. Yeah. You, you go through security, you sat in there, you're looking at the screen. There's one job. Don't miss the plane. That's gonna... literally what you're waiting for. You're sat in the boarding lounge waiting to get on the plane. I'm going to tell you right now, they've, they, they were meant to be traveling with eight, so two obviously missed. They traveled with six in the end. Who got, Someone got a little injury. Uh, yeah, so Jules Dangakodo didn't play in the game because he um, has an ongoing injury. So they ran with five players against the Caledonia Gladiators. Uh, both Terrell Green and Jacob Wiley missed the flight from Bristol Airport to get to the game. Uh, I have so many questions about this. Uh, the club put out a statement on uh, social media um, shortly after they missed the flight. Uh, get up on screen producer Dan. Uh, the statement from the club says, uh, unfortunately, two of the Plymouth City Patriots players were unable to make the game against Caledonia Gladiators today as they did not make the flight with the rest of the team. The club will be investigating the matter upon the team's return from Glasgow. Well, I'll tell you where you can start your investigation. The Weatherspoons at Bristol <laughs> Airport. Because <laughs> they're probably in there having oh, breakfast. Oh my goodness me. Do you know what I like to think happened, Joel, is Go that they got to Glasgow and you know the baggage carousel. <laughs> Only six players came out with the baggage carousel. Where are the other two? They had to go to they had to go to the check-in, find out where the tag was on the players. I don't yeah. know what happened. I'd love to know what they did uh, stranded at Bristol uh, while yeah. the players are out there. Maybe they went for a day out in Bristol. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we had a night out, actually. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, why were not the players all together? Why are you not counting heads onto the plane? Um, uh, and what were Jacob Wiley and Terrell Green doing uh, in the airport to miss the plane? Uh, I don't know if you've seen an account, Sam, on Instagram I called say. British Basketball Memes. Uh, Hilarious. Well, I'm a big fan of British Basketball Memes. Uh, they do some great memes. They put up some wanted posters on their account saying, where are they last seen at Bristol Airport? Uh, but British Basketball Memes, uh, you can have this one for free. Uh, get it up on screen. Uh, here's, this is the, uh, the classic classic meme, the classic <laughs> distracted boyfriend meme for the podcast list tonight with both Jacob Wiley and Terrell Green, uh, rather, um, you know, enjoying Bristol Airport's weather spoons than a trip to Caledonia Gladiators away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. The memes were doing the rounds last week. It's great to see. I, I love a good meme, Sam. I know you do, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, Joel knows every meme that has ever been created. So yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh, you know what I mean? Just social, working in the social. We'd love to see the memes. Um, and that's it for this week's news. You're listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right, time for us to wrap up this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast with our mailbag. And we've got a few questions that have popped in on the mailbag. Um, MJ Lucas 6 on Insta. Who's that? Uh, MJ. I've been growing up with him for a while. I've been playing basketball since like fourth grade. Uh, Not family? Uh, no, actually, he's not. Uh, but we do say, have the Luke. same last name, though. Yeah. yeah but he's say. more like family than anything. He just asks, do you miss your friends? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, definitely miss my friends. <laughs> uh, here's a question that's come through from Grace on Instagram. She wants to know, what's your favorite shoe? Now, I guess you could divide this into two, playing shoe and then off-court shoe, right? Uh, so off-court shoe, 
I would say is Air Force Ones. I always have to have really? a fresh pair of all white Air Force Ones. Um, I've I've seen you. They're probably well. seasonal. Uh, you probably get one every season. Nice. <laughs> do you ever get the custom colors? That you can get like people that do like they, they can like you create stay them for with you. The whites, the Cuban, the classic white yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. stay with the whites. Um, and then on the court, uh, right now I'm I'm liking the John Morant's I've been playing in, but overall I'm usually a Kyrie or a Kobe. Oh yeah, oh, Kyrie's nice. Yeah. nice. Very nice. Um, one last question for you. Yeah, Dan might it. have one as well, but should we ask one question yeah, do, here? Yeah, do your last one. I don't know if you. Who's this guy? He's called Pasquale Landolfo. <laughs> oh, please do not bring up the Knicks. <laughs> He's literally He's asked who's winning a seven-game series, the Knicks or the Bucks. Okay, let me put it like this, Pasquale. <laughs> Pasquale. If, if, the, if Giannis plays, it will be a gentleman sweep 4-1. And okay. the Knicks will get one game if they make it out the next round. And then if Giannis doesn't play, I'll say we'll go probably six. It'll be 4-2. There we go. But the Bucks are going to dismantle the Knicks. Oh, here we go. This is what we came for. I've got a question for you on the same because I'm a Minnesota fan. Oh, Suns, Minnesota. Who's doing it? First round. The way Anthony Edwards has been playing, he's been playing like a little Michael Jordan. So I don't. Yeah. at this point, I really don't know. But the Suns, it's just hard to beat those guys. Yeah. They, they put up a lot of points. So you're going to have to outscore those guys. Cat's back now, though, so... There we go. Uh, Producer Dan, you got one final question? I do have a final question, and you may cut this out, but my question <laughs> is for your mum. I want to ask, what is the cutest thing Tijon's ever done? I want to know, like, best present he's ever got you. Um, so not too long ago, Mother's Day, like two years ago, he brought me a little light-up plaque that says to the number one mom... It was it was gorgeous, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is cute. That, that is, is cute. cute. That's really weird because my mum's the number one mum, so <laughs> <laughs> probably in the UK. Ah, oh, I get it. Okay, uh, okay. US number one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, well, that's a great place for us to wrap up this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast. I've got lots of thank yous to make. Uh, thank you to Jay the Barber for coming in and giving T. John Lucas uh, an absolutely immaculate trim ahead of Friday's game against the Caledonia Gladiators. Uh, Teach, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, thank you, guys. Shout uh, out to Jay, man. Appreciate you. Producer Dan, thanks for pushing the buttons as always. Thank you. Shout out to Tijon's family for joining us here in the yes. podcast studio. Hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Bristol. Indeed. And uh, thank you to you, Sam, for joining me on the podcast. No, thanks, Joe. I've got to go head to that sponsor tournament now, so I've got to mm. shoot. I'll go edit this. <laughs> uh, uh, anything else to add before we wrap up this week's episode? Absolutely not. See you no? soon. A uh, quick reminder, listen to us on all major podcast providers on YouTube. If you are enjoying the podcast, please share with a friend, like, comment, and subscribe. Give us a rating and review. All those podcasty things that podcasts hosts tell you to do please go do them but until then from joel sam and producer dan we'll see you next time right here on the bristol flyers podcast